What's up, everybody? The Montgomery Bell today. We're going to do the uh, Montgomery Bell loop, staying at Hall Spring Shelter. We've got five of us and one dog. And we'll be hitting the trail here soon. Scarlett says she is ready to go. And so, if you're going to hit the trail from the visitor center, you go out here, you cross the bridge, just kind of walk back like you're going back toward the entrance. And then when you get this little yellow bell in here, there's the trail right up here. The Montgomery Bell Trail is about 10 and a quarter miles around the whole thing. And where we're going to the shelter tonight is about six and a quarter. It leaves uh, four miles uh, to come out tomorrow. So we're at Wildcat Shelter now, which is across the creek where they're headed. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, in the fall you can see it clearly. But uh, due to vegetation, you don't really see it that well in the summertime. I had to pull over here and get some shade. Normally from here in the fall you can see the creek nope, really we well right out there. Alright, we right, here we go. So we're going to follow this creek here for about a mile. We'll cross it a couple times here and there. Oh, here there, Paul. Well, Just in case you fall down, I want to catch it. <laughs> the walk, whatever you want to follow, we're best fine all that there. Okay, yeah. So when you come out of the woods right through here, got a road crossing right here. Come on, the gravel road. Let's see. I do just turn back in the woods here after about 200 feet, something like that. Holy crap, it's getting hot. Why would anybody in their right mind want to come out here and hike in hot weather? Ridiculous. So, right through there, I don't know if you can see it, but railroad tracks. And uh, from where we're camping, they're less than a mile from the back of the shelter, and so uh, I'll tell you what all might have happened out here a long time ago, and those railroad tracks there kind of play a little role in it. So this little stretch right through here, or following this road, it goes for uh, just a little over 1.1 uh, miles. And then from there, we got about a half a mile through the woods, and then we'll be at Creech Hollow Lake. The road keeps going. But definitely keep track of this Montgomery Bell Trail sign here because you're going to want to turn and go. Now from here we're about a half mile to uh, Creech Hollow Lake. It is muggy out here today. It ain't even full on summer yet. It's just the last part of May. Yeah, so that's the junction here. So this right here is the trail that follows along by Creech Hollow Lake, which is right through the trees. So uh, some of them are going to hang out for a little bit, take a break, and then they're going to head on to camp. I'm going to come over here and fish a little while, and then I'll head on to camp later. Creech Hollow Lake. So, uh, like I said, I've got something to tell you about later. And uh, this little lake right here, kind of plays a part in it, so uh, keep this place in mind.
That's a, no fish were caught. Looked like they were all on bed. Got a little underwater footage there. So uh, that was as close to catching fish. Just catching them on the camera. Alright, so we're back here at the junction again. Don's heading up toward the shelters. If you see this sign here, it says Hall Spring Campsite 3.4. That's wrong. It's only two. If you see Woodland Campsite, uh, that's only about 0.65, I think it is, to the turnoff, and then 0.3 from there. So right at about one mile to Woodland Campsite. So these are wrong. Okay, so from right here, this little road we're crossing, this is like 0.35 from uh, when we were at the lake back there. And from here it's like point three, and we'll be at the turnoff for the uh, woodland shelter. Point three back from the road, there's the uh, trail to the woodland shelter. From here I think we got 1.35, and we'll pass uh, Lake Woodhaven along the way. I really like these little bridges like this out here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, here we go. And the boat ramp over there. So this is Lake Woodhaven. Yeah, so our friends just came through here like maybe an hour ago tops and there's already spiders have already started spinning webs back across the trail another reason to hate hot weather hiking so this is hall creek What's it for? i have no idea it's black down there hello yeah that's hall creek of course, there's Hall Springs and Hall Cemetery and all that, so I guess there's a lot of Hall stuff out here. I bet the Halls even had hallways in their houses. Sasquatch poop. Oh, uh, that's it. Look, look at that big tiger swallowtail there. Pretty nice right there. So if you saw my other video of this place where Billy and I came out here and I walked across that thing, that thing is sketchy. It still looks even more sketchy now. Almost there. Come on, Mark, you can do it. It's not that much further. I'm dying. Come on, Mark. Are you trying to kill me? I can't do this anymore. One foot in front of the other. <sighs> Somebody's gonna have to drag me. Just roll, buddy. Just roll. <laughs> and we are Those here. Damn things in the sun. I don't tell you it's in the sun. So there's Hall Spring right up there. Look at these bunch of smelly savages. Sorry, thing, guys. You got to keep going on. Let's spot a <laughs> <laughs> sick him. Sick him. Sick him. Sick him. <laughs> he didn't know, did he? <laughs> Paul, you want to give us a temperature report there on the water? Feels like 35. <laughs> 35. <laughs> just above freezing. <laughs> I wasn't invited to my party until the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this uh, spot here is uh, Hall Spring. This is Hall Spring Shelter. And uh, the significance about this area here is, uh, is because it's known for having a werewolf here since uh, about the 1860s. South of here, which is straight back that way, if you remember earlier when I showed you those train tracks, those train tracks run about a, a little less than a mile they're straight south of here. Uh, in the 1860s, there was a uh, train, a circus train, 
that derailed and uh, when it crashed there was uh, a couple of uh, werewolves or wolfmen that were on the train that escaped into the woods and uh, so they started having weird things happen out here there was uh, a couple of travelers that came right through this area and they could tell that they were being stalked by something and so uh, uh, they split up and uh, one of the guys uh, all they could hear was screams going off through the woods where the uh, the werewolf was uh, tearing his buddy to shreds and so they put together a posse and they came out here and they uh, put a goat out on a tether and uh, they waited until the, the, the werewolf came out here and they uh, heard all the commotion going on and uh, they, they fired up their lanterns. Of course, this was back in the 1800s and uh, there was only two of them that fired up a lantern because the werewolf had not only taken the uh, goat but also had taken the other two guys. And so uh, there was a big game hunter that came out here and uh, there's a house is right over that way it's cabin uh we'll kind of go right by that tomorrow if we make it out of the woods alive here tonight <clears throat> anyway uh this big game hunter and he had set up to uh try to kill the werewolf and uh it wound up chasing him he, he shot at it and he hit it a couple times or whatever and uh it chased him into a cabin that was out that way and uh, he got up in the rafters and pretty much shot every bullet he had at the uh, werewolf until uh, it, uh, the, the sun started coming up and the werewolf took off. And now, if you remember Creech Hollow Lake that we were fishing at earlier, that before that was a lake there, that was just Creech Hollow. And it was thought that the uh, werewolf lived out there in a cave because there was a cave out there that had a lot of bones outside the entrance of it but uh, it was flooded when they made the lake so I'm sure there's a lot of other stories that's only ones I know right now so this is werewolf spring here not just hall spring yeah look like Scarlett you're playing the werewolf tonight is that okay yeah <laughs> I don't know if she'll eat us but she'll lick us to death anyway that you will do. <laughs> I'm being eaten by a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is uh, uh, the other the other legend for out here. This is the uh, white screamer. The white screamer. While the origin of this creature woman is unknown, many of the stories remain the same. The strange woman had a scream that would drive any one unlucky enough to hear it straight into a mental breakdown. The white screamer is, is an exotic animal that escaped when a traveling circus was passing through town. Scared of the repercussions, when they could not quickly restrain the beast, they opted to leave it and hurry to the next town. Others say there is no clear, no early creature. Others say there is no early creature that could cause the damage of the white screamer, and instead suggest that it is an unearthly apparition that wanders aimlessly. Others say it is a banshee that emits the horrible cries. The white screamer haunts the White Bluff area, often terrifying ha hikers and hunters who stumble upon it. Even drivers and walkers have had experiences with the strange creature. They all describe the same type of beast. It is usually hunched over but can stand completely erect. Often it is found hunting or discovered after the deaths of dogs or calves. Despite the origin, a misty form seems to appear and screams like a woman in great distress. Those unlucky enough to hear it can only listen for a matter of seconds before they are driven completely insane. Those lucky enough to escape have returned with non-believers only to find a spot of charred grass where the figure had once appeared. Many were not lucky and suffered greatly at the hands of the horrible beast. In the early 1920s, a young man established a small home and farm with his wife and seven children. On occasion, they would wake up to the sound of the blood-curdling screaming. The children would be inconsolable. When the man could no longer handle the nightly calls, he headed out one evening, carrying his rifle. He climbed the nearby hills where he had heard the sounds, but found nothing. When he decided to give up and turn back, he did finally hear screams. Unfortunately, 
These were not the screams that he had, that had led the man in a search. He ran as fast as he could back to the house, but it was too late. The screams he heard were those of his family, and now their bodies lay strewn all over the cabin. Pieces scattered everywhere. Their house and graves can still be found in the hollow of White Bluff. Ooh. All right, Don. White scream. There he goes. <laughs> <I'm> crazy. <laughs> False crazy now. Well, Paul, you, you were crazy before. Yeah. You were crazy before that. There's the moon coming up above the trees. There's something out there. There's some eyes looking out. What is that? I think there's a werewolf out there. Check this out. Cold Mountain Dew from the spring. Oh, no werewolves. Paul kept away from it uh, last night with his bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scarlet did. Scarlet did a good job keeping the werewolves away. Yes, she did. So we're here. There's Hall Cemetery. Follow along. Ore pit loop right here. We're a little bit shorter way. You could take the road here, but we're gonna take this. Continue on. Yep. Ranger Station, four miles. Uh, so this is the uh, the bridge alternate here. <laughs> here I believe there was a house right back in here is because there's this so I think there's probably a, a cabin right out in there and that's probably where the guy was supposed to have been shooting at the werewolf <laughs> speaking of werewolf So on the map, you see Hall Cemetery. This is it right over here. It's where everybody at the uh, werewolf killed is located now. <laughs> this is one of the little creeks that goes to uh, uh, Lake Woodhaven. Wow. Oh, Pay attention. Holy Moses. And they're off like a herd of turtles. <laughs> Look at the rock. All kind of little creeks through this park. So one thing about it, if you're coming out here, you don't really have to carry that much water because there is a lot of water along the trail. That's a big tree right there. Or pit Montgomery Bell this way. This is a replica of the uh, Macadow House, the guy who started the Presbyterian Church, uh, Cumberland Presbyterian Church. All right, so this is where the concrete turns into trail again. This is some of the ore pits. Really? Yeah. And so uh, a lot of the iron they brought out of here used to make cannonballs that they used in the War of 1812. I'm good. All right, it's the, this is the other overnight parking area. This is the official one actually, but we parked at the visitor center. That'd be all out. That's a pretty good little hill right there. So back at the uh, warehouse, that parking lot back there, I said that's the overnight parking. 
from there we've got about a mile to go to the visitor center. Got some sweet downhill now. You tired? <laughs> I think that's a yes. Alright, so get up here to the road, cross it, straight back into the woods again. Almost there. Now that's back to the uh, visitor center. The trail does officially go this way for just a little bit more, but comes back around, so. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what about it, Paul? It's yeah, good. It's made of all one piece. Yay. <laughs> Only two falls, right? Only a few falls. So you got three minutes. Don, what about it? Another fun, fun trip. Oh, yeah. No werewolves, no screaming white whatever. <laughs> the white screamers? White screamers. All right, so uh, there goes another one here, Montgomery Bell. That was uh, Werewolf Spring. Uh, like it, comment, all that good stuff. Catch you on the next one. Everybody, later. Later. later.